Hey, welcome back to the Cuba Data Science Channel. Tonight's uh, lesson is going to be on how to combine a dozen CSV files into Power Query and how to how to how to clean it, do a little data cleaning, and and fix a couple errors. Okay. The first thing we also want to do, I suggest, is that you you create a directory. Okay. You create a top level directory to store your projects in. So you have. So you can see here, I could have done something like this. Power BI then put all, all these to be my, my, uh, my projects, okay? That's one way to do it. But what I'm doing tonight is I'm going to, do, I'm going to use PBI for Power, for power, power, BI, uh, power BI. And then I'm, I created a directory called Cyclistic Bike Share. So we click on that. Then you create a second directory. And you click on this. And now this is where you put all, of your, all your files in the same place. Now... All these files have to have the same uh, uh, the same format, the same column format. Okay, so now we got our data there. So the first thing we're going to do next is just come over here, get click on get data. Folder. Select the folder where the, where the data files are located. Documents. Documents. Select our data folder. Now, what I want to recommend for you here is that you always click transform data. Don't just don't blindly load or combine files without without important approach because you want to do all your data cleaning, data running before you combine them into a single data frame. So click transform data. Let's go back to our first one. Let's look at what the question actually is. Okay. Hello, sir. Should we remove all blanks from, from all 12 files? Because when I combine all the data, there is an error occurs in Power BI. An error of size something. Okay. What the devil is that? Log 10. Okay. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> the problem is it with missing values? Now it is true that as you'll see, station name and station name IDs do have a, roughly about 112,000 rows that are missing any name, any any value. But that that's not actually the problem. Now, if you look up here, you can see is this is the actual files we're interested in here. Okay, this just gives us summary information. Now you can't if you do an extra check, you can't come over here and say filter equals and what this will do this this will only this will only keep the files in that directory that has a CSV ending on it. So now we come over here and move other columns. Now now this is a magic part. You click on this double down arrow. And now we got this, do not click skip files with errors, okay? Do not do that. Now click OK. Okay. Now if we come over here, you can see station names. Now what this is doing, this is reading the, the first thousand rows. It looks like the first thousand rows said, well, these are all numbers. So therefore, this station ID call must be a number. Well, the trouble is, that's not always the case. There are there are uh, a, a few station IDs which contain a letter and a number. So what's happened is, when it gets down to the thousand and first row, it throws an error because it's because it's no longer because it's not seeing a numeric value there. Now, the easiest thing to do here is what? Just uh, just delete it. Just delete the starting and end date. The other thing you can do is, you can come over here and you could just Change change type to text. At this point, this shouldn't make any difference anymore. Okay. All right. But for our purposes, let's just delete it. Okay. Now, if we come back over here. First of all, let's let's just, just check the number of rows. Three, three, four, eight, nine, three, four, eight, nine. Okay, 
delete that. We can come over here. We load more. I'm going to go, I'm going to look for those uh, 100,000 rows that are missing. Uh, that are missing uh, station names. See, it says blank there. I'm going to comment that. Click this. Then count these. I just will tell us how many rows are missing station names. So 122,175 rows are missing station names. The question becomes, what do we do with these missing station names? Well, again, there's a couple of options. We, we could simply come over here and say remove empty. Okay. Come over here, say remove empty. Now, I want to emphasize the thing that this is your project. You can do whatever you want to with this data. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to delete the rows that's missing station names, by all means, you can do that. Okay. Let's, let's do another count. Let's see, let's see how much, how many we've lost here now. Remember, it was it's four eight seven or something. So we are from four eight uh, four four million eight hundred thousand to three thousand two hundred thirty rows, three million two hundred ninety five thousand rows. So we did we did lose quite a number there. Now. There is something else you can do. Again, again, this is strictly up to you. Come over here and say down. Uh, over here and say replace values. Leave the first column blank because we are looking for a. Okay, ABC Street. And with any luck, we will have a, a call, a, a row name, a, a station name, ABC Street. Now, again, obviously, if this occurs on the job, we're going to be down at our manager's office saying, "Hey, what do you want me? To, what do you want? What's what's this?" And right, and okay, right there is the, the street which we created. Let's do. Let's unclose this. Then let's do this. And we should have like one hundred twenty-two thousand rows, right? Transform. Yep, one hundred twenty-two thousand rows. Very good. Now. Again, this is up to you. Okay. Next thing you've wanted, you probably want to do a little day cleanup. Okay. You go over here. Let's copy this. Let's duplicate this column. Over to transform, come to date, date only. Now 
Okay. Come over here, duplicate end date. Okay, and what you want to look at here is all these different date options: year, start of year, end of year, month. You can you can either you can either uh, start a month, end a month, days in the month. You could also pull out the number of the month, you know, January one, February two, or the name of the month. You could pull out the quarter, or the week, or the day, or the earliest or the latest date. Okay, that's all up to you at this point. Probably the other basic function you want to do is is you want to uh, you want to you want to calculate uh, trip duration. Now again, as you saw there, you, you you can you can pull out the date, you can pull out the hour that a ride took place on, you can pull out the day of the week the ride, uh, you can pull out the quarter that the, in which 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 the ride took place in. So you have all these different levels of granularity to determine how you want to how you want to do your calculations. The only thing it's The only other thing we need to worry about here is uh, let's try something. Now the trouble with I'll give you a little hint here. There's two problems with the dates. One is there's some there's some trip durations that have zero minutes, zero time onto it. The other one is you have a, you have some trips or rows which have a, either a have a negative trip duration on them. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to use the ABS function. I tried this a couple of times and it didn't actually work. Okay, ABS. Into that. Seems like last time I did this, started at. Oops, that didn't work right, did it? Okay, so now we got a basic trip duration. Hmm. Now this is interesting. Trip duration hours. about minutes. So all this is this, this just this, this just this, uh, 27. Right. But some of them have hours, so we actually don't want to do that. Okay.
I haven't actually used this function before, so we'll see. It's going to be as big a surprise as me. And now you got your trip duration. Okay. So that's that's sort of your most basic setup here, okay? So what do we do over here? We came over here. And we could of course come back over here, right? And get rid of these over here also. But for the time being, that's pretty much all you need to know to get started, okay? Okay. And there you have it. How, how to handle multiple tables, multiple files, and how to, how to import multiple files from the directory, and then how to, how to do some troubleshooting and data wrangling in order to get the data in a, in a condition which we can actually begin to do with it. So the last thing we have to do is go to home, And that's really all and that real that's really all there is to it. All right. So the so the so the summary is what? Create a directory to create a separate directory for each project, put the put a put a put a subdirectory inside the project directory for your data, and then and then and then and then go to town that way. The other thing is you want to do is uh, you want to check column types. Because remember what the trouble was, not that we're missing some data. Is that is that that uh, some of the station IDs had had uh, the first thousand rows of station it was read as a as a numeric field. Well, the problem is some of the later ones had 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 letters and numbers in it, which caught which caused an error because of, because because it, it couldn't convert it to a number. Okay, and then we then we did some very simple uh, data manipulations. Okay, and here's our data. And we could just do a very quick thing here. Let's just say one of these here. At this point, it's just Power BI, okay? And there you go. There's your first quick plot. So this is a count of the rides by day from August 20th up until May 2024. And my friends, that's all there is to that's all there is to doing the cyclistic bike share data in Power BI. Hope you found this useful. And uh, I'll see you I'll see you down the road. By the way, I do do live streaming on on YouTube, 8 p.m. Monday through Friday. Uh, it's 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and Monday through Friday. Be sure to stop by then and say hi, okay? Questions, comments, you can just put some stuff in, in the list below.